Good day and welcome to uh, another episode in our Tableau Custom Chart series. We've got quite a nice sweet one for you today. We are looking at the lollipop chart. Now do hang around, do have a look. We will be building something similar to you that you can see on screen. It will obviously be way better and um, there's a little surprise at the end on how to improve your uh, chart even with some uh, pictures. Yeah, that will be it. Okay, well let's have a look at the lollipop chart. So this is what it looks like. You can see it's got um, little bars going up and circles at the end of the bars. Um, and the lollipop chart is normally used and it's an improvement actually on a normal bar chart to make it a bit more exciting. And you'll see in our tutorial that you can even play around with the sizes of the bubbles and give additional information. Let's have a look at what we're working with today in terms of data. All right, so quite a simple data set. Um, as always, do remember the data set will be available on the Super Data Science website. And what you will see is um, you've got basically three columns, the candy type and all types of candy or some types of candies with the sales figure and the profit number as well. So this is just for a random uh, sweets manufacturer or candy manufacturer. And um, we will be building this into a lollipop chart. So let's start off with a fresh Tableau instance and connect to our data as always. So we'll be connecting to an Excel file and we'll be selecting the candies data file. And we can click open. It should import perfectly from the get go. And then we can just jump into our sheet. So this is nothing super complicated about a um, lollipop chart, but you will know if you don't know how to make it, it might even be difficult. So let's firstly start off with the candy type and put that into the columns. And next we will put in our sales figure into the rows. As you can see, it starts off, let me just expand it a little bit with a normal uh, bar chart. And um, what we can do then to create the bubbles on the top of these, um, well, in terms of these bars, is basically to duplicate our one measure over there. And it's straightforward by just holding the control button down, dragging it next to itself, and immediately we'll have um, two separate charts and basically just duplicating our first chart. Now to put it on top of each other, we will just click on the second measure and click on the dual axis chart. It will change around a little bit some of the actual, um, well, some of the chart types, but what we can do is we can just click on the first one and it will open up in the marks tab um, well, specifically referencing that one. And maybe if you haven't worked with this yet, it's important to note that as soon as we create a duplicate or put two charts next to each other, it would create more um, options over here. So you can see there's the all options and all of these options, well, these options would apply to um, both of the charts. And the same with um, if you go into each one individually, any changes here would only affect the specific one. You'll see the names is just sim simply sum of sales and sum of sales too. But um, an easy way to see it is if you actually click on them, it would actually navigate. Let's just click on all again. It would actually navigate to the one that you are working with. All right, so let's start off with the first one. Uh, we do remember we actually want a bar. And now you can see it is, it's putting on top of each other. But what's very important always when you do use the um, dual axis chart is to just go into your second axis. Uh, right click and make sure you do synchronize the axis. That will ensure that um, your chart is lined up properly. All right. And now we can start making it look like a lollipop. And um, the first thing we'll do is um, firstly make the size of the bars much smaller. And also from a color perspective, use something neutral like a, a gray over there. And you can see it sort of starts to look like a, <laughs> a lollipop. Then we can go into the next chart or the next um, well, options for the next chart. And we can play around with the size yet, yeah, yet again, open up a little bit bigger and we have our lollipops. What I'll do, I will just be hiding our um, axis over here. So I can just, sorry, our, our header over there, make this a little bit bigger. And um, that is in essence our chart. Looks good, right? But uh, yeah, we can improve it even more. I do prefer to have the, um, no, no, if you can call it the stick of the lollipop a bit smaller, something like that. And I like also like to put on additional information and we are working with the sales as we've mentioned. So it's quite straightforward to just put the sales into the label and ensure, now you see I made a mistake actually, you should not be putting it into the bar chart. Um, you need to put it actually into the, um, the, well, the circles. 
and what you'll do is just put it on top of label you will see obviously it would be putting it at the bottom we can change that by just going to the alignment and making sure it's in the middle and in the middle once again and we can make this a little bit bigger maybe a 14 and we will just make it bold as well now at the same time we can also just format this so we can just click there and format our number using a custom uh, well, custom f formula or a custom format as such and making it one decimal but also using a millions uh, unit so that looks much neater already now we could even further improve it by um, taking the actual um, well we've seen that we've actually got the profit that measure in as well now an easy way to do this would be to give a indication of whether each of these individual products were actually profitable or not so without putting additional information in like the profit uh, value which will just make it a bit more messy as you can see we can just go and create a calculated field and as easy as calling this profit or loss so let's just do it like this so profit loss and just having a normal if statement and we say if the profit is greater than zero then we have we put a um, the word profit as a string into this variable and if it's a loss we when it's negative obviously it will become a loss as an output as straightforward as that now you see it will be created in the dimensions and we can just drag it onto color and immediately we can just let's move this back here we can just change the color so i like to have a loss of nice bright red and the profit green green color of money as always and i'm checking everything there we are how cool does that look we could further go in and um well, we know now that the candy floss as well as gummy bears have actually made a loss in our here well in our data as such so what we could do is just add the um, well give an indication of how big the loss was now uh, we know the loss but sorry the, the, the profit amount but um, if we use this onto size as it is at the moment let's just make sure we use it on the bubble um, if he if we actually use the profit onto size it would stuff it up quite a bit because we know that the loss or as you can see there the, the profit as such is a negative 15,000 they it um, well there we go it's negative 9 and a negative 90 but the indication of the negative we've already got making it a loss in terms of the red or well, the red color being assigned to these two so we will just make another calculated field and call this our absolute profit now that would uh, using the absolute function we will this will basically just remove the uh, negative well it will ensure that all of our outputs are positive all the values as such from the profit column would be positive now if we use that on top uh, let me just fix the spelling mistake uh, so absolute no, there we go if we use that now on top of the size you can see it makes it smaller but at least it gives us a proper indication that um, there is still something in that bubble now it doesn't look the greatest like it is right now so I, I would go and just increase the size even more so just make it even uh, yeah greater or more highlighting the fact that those were actually uh, losses as such and what we could do um, if we if this this data becomes a bit or the the text becomes a bit much for the um, for the space that we've got and we can actually just make the size a bit smaller even to let's make a 10 and see what that looked like there we are much neater and the information comes through quite nicely and now we know that the loss was actually a 9000 um, and 15 thousand over there with the loss and with a with profit 90 there so although these have losses they aren't as significant as the profit we have made on the others as i've promised promised in the introduction what we could do as well briefly is to also change these bubbles so these lollipops to actually have icons or pictures of the kind of candy making it even a bit more visual stimulating for our user so how we could do that is to change this chart type to a shape chart type we could actually just remove the text from there as well as the size because we wouldn't need, need need that necessarily and in fact even the color could disappear all right so what we would do now is to say we want to use the candy type as our shape 
be able to use custom shapes in this instance. I'm just going to make this a bit smaller as it doesn't need to be, be that big. All right, and um, yeah, so these obviously look nice, but um, we can improve on that even more. So um, what I normally do is in my Tableau repository, and I will briefly go there, in my Tableau repository, under the Shapes folder, you can create custom, uh, well, custom folders in here where you put your own. So I've just got a couple of pictures that I've got from the internet indicating um, what these um, different candy types are. And if you do look under the drop down here, you will notice them under candy. And you can just uh, assign the palette and they are assigned properly. Now, just go and check them because they might not be 100%. I do think seeing as it's going alphabetically and I've saved the names properly, they should line up. Yeah, there we go. And we can just hit apply. And there as promised a very nicely looking lollipop chart. Yeah, that's, I think that looks good. And obviously, if it's a bit too small, your pictures or whatever the case is, you can increase a little bit. And you can use this method for any lollipop chart or any chart that you would like to um, to show off a little bit with. Um, well, one thing else that can improve it a little bit is if you use the sort and you just sort of descending by the actual uh, sum of sales field. Yeah, that should be fine. And then you've got a descending, again, making it a bit easier for the user to understand how the sales figures compare to each other. Yeah, and that concludes our video for today. I hope you picked up some nice skills and learned another nice custom chart to use in your visualizations. As always, don't forget to stay tuned and forget don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. There's some more nice, inter interesting custom charts coming up. And until next time, 